Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to your 12th day in the C programming language. In this lesson, I want to actually talk about floating point numbers. In fact, we've talked about them or at least demonstrated them previously, but there's something that we actually have to be very careful about with floating point numbers and that's the precision. So this is going to be a little bit of a shorter lesson here, but I want to go ahead and demonstrate something that you always have to be aware of when working with floating point numbers and that's the precision of those numbers. I think this will best be showcased with an example, so let's go ahead and dive in here. So let's go ahead and just set up some code here. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just create a floating point number here. So number one here equals 0 0.12345, and then a one here, and then an F. As I recall in most architectures, we get about six points of precision with a floating point number. Okay, so let's go ahead and just print off this floating point number here. I'll use percent %f as the format specifier in n, and then number one here. Okay, let's start with this much so far. Compile the program, run it, and as predicted, we get our result here. Nothing too exciting so far. Now let's go ahead and just create another floating point number. Now this time we're going to just do 1.0f minus 0 0.12345 uh, pieces of precision here. Uh, and one more, and then an F and a semicolon. And let's go ahead and print out the result of this will be number two. Okay, so let's go ahead and print F, percent F, and we'll put our second floating point number here. And let's just go ahead and recompile, rerun, and the results are the same. Okay, now let's go ahead and compare these numbers here. So if number one is equivalent to number two, then print F, these numbers are equal. Okay, so let's go ahead and give that a try. If I compile and I run it, um, hmm. Well, this is the tricky part in what this lesson is entirely about actually, comparing floating point numbers. This is where we have to be a little bit careful. Let's try to do a little bit more of an investigation to see what's going on here. So one of the things that we can do with the C programming language in our printf is actually choose how many digits of precision we want. So I could put 0.6 here, for example, and that'll show me six digits of precision uh, for our uh, after the decimal point. But let's go ahead and crank this up to 12 here. Let's see what happens. I'll do this for both numbers so that we can compare and see if the result that we're getting here is actually equal. Okay, so I'll recompile, rerun, and ah, now this is interesting here. You'll notice that our number one here, which we've directly assigned as 0 0.000001, actually shows up here. And the rest of the results here are just zero here. But what's interesting here is when we do this as a result of an operation, 1.0 minus 0 0.999999, which if my calculations are correct, that we get the correct first uh, six decimal places here. But there's a little bit of garbage or left over here. Now, is that garbage unallocated memory or is this just a result of our ability to represent every number in our computers? And the fact of the matter is we can't represent every possible digit or every number on our machines. Now, how can we fix this? Well, something we can try is to try a double. So let's go ahead and try this experiment. So I'll try double here. And in order to make sure that it's a double, I'll get rid of the uh, Fs here for the format specifier. Let's see if it reminds me what format specifier to use in printf. Oh, it works just fine. And this time we can see that we get pretty much a exact result. But our equality is still not checking out here. So even using different data types with more precision just does not work here. So typically what we need to do if we're writing low stakes programs, meaning that we're not trying to send a space shuttle to the moon, we can do this little trick here. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is see if these numbers are close enough. Because even with a double, let's go ahead and increase our precision here. Let's try 18 digits after the zero here. We'll go ahead and see that eventually this number cannot be represented just based off of how many significant digits we have and how the binary number system works. So our trick is going to be to subtract these two numbers from each other. And it doesn't matter what order because we're going to take the absolute value, 
with the floating point absolute value command and just see if that difference is less than something relatively small, usually an epsilon value here, okay, of say 00001F. Okay, now let's go ahead and recompile our program. We're going to get an error because the F absolute value function is included in math.h. Most compilers, if you're following along, will be good enough to just tell you what this is. Uh, but just to show you how to find this out from the manual pages, and if you go ahead and run this, you'll see math.h here. And you'll notice that, again, this is for doubles, the floating point absolute value number. If you're specifically working with floats, you have f absolute value f. Because, again, in the C programming language, every function needs to have a unique name um, if you have different parameters. Okay, so let's go ahead and make those two corrections by including our library. And we are using the correct floating point uh, function here because everything is a double here. Now let's go ahead and run this. And if it runs properly, we will get this printf message claiming that these numbers are correct. So let's go ahead and compile. And it says these numbers are in fact equal. And just for the sake of having nice output, if you're following along, I'll put an end line there, recompile one more time, and run here. So these numbers are close enough. And again, us as mathematicians, if we were doing this on paper, we would say, yeah, these numbers are exactly equal. But again, the reality is our machines would need enough memory to fill the entirety of the universe if we were going to represent every single possible number to any extreme amount of uh, digits that we would have on either side of the decimal point. So our floating point and our doubles are pretty good, they're pretty precise, and if you're doing applications like games, for example, which would have a lot of floating point computations or computations with doubles, then this little trick will work well enough. If you're working on a more high stakes um, or secure system, say with aircrafts or space shuttles where you need even more precision, you're going to have to craft your own data type to get more digits of precision. And I think that would be a good challenge to build a sort of big floating point number if you want to go ahead and explore this idea more. So folks, I hope this was a useful lesson. I hope it showed you how to deal with floating point numbers. And if you've ever wondered if you've been getting some weird errors or something like this where the equality operator appears not to work, remember, be very careful with the equality operator in languages like C, C++, well, in fact, pretty much every language out there because this problem is universal with just how we represent numbers on our machines with decimal points. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this lesson, folks. I hope you liked this video. If it was helpful, comment below if you have more questions. It's a fascinating subject on number representation and systems. And make sure you subscribe so you don't miss more lessons in this series or the many other series on this channel. All right, folks, take care and thank you for your time.